if I should have a daughter, instead of mom, she's going to call me point B. So that way, she knows that no matter what happens, at least she can find her way to me. And I'm going to paint the solar systems on the backs of her hands. So she has to learn the entire universe before she can say, oh, I know that, like the back of my hand. And she's going to learn that this life will hit you hard in the face. Wait for you to get back up so it can kick you in the stomach. But getting the wind knocked out of you is the only way to remind your lungs how much they like the taste of air. There is hurt here that cannot be fixed by band-aids or poetry. So for the first time she realizes that Wonder Woman isn't coming, I'll make sure she doesn't have to wear the cape all by herself. Because no matter how wide you stretch your fingers, your hands will always be too small to catch all the pain they want to feel. Believe me, I've tried. And baby, I'll tell her, didn't keep your nose up in the air like that. I know that trick. I've done it a million times. You're just smelling for smoke. So you can follow the trail back to a burning house to see if you can find the boy who lost everything in the fire. To see if you can save him or else find the boy who lit the fire in the first place to see if you can change him. And I know she will anyways. So always keep an extra supply of chocolate and brain boots nearby because there is no heartbreak chocolate can't fix. Okay, there are a few heartbreaks chocolate can't fix, but that's what the rain boots are for because rain will wash away everything if you let it. I want her to look at the world through an underside of a glass bottom bowl to look through a microscope at the galaxies that exist on a pinpoint of a human mind. That's the way my mom taught me, that there'll be days like this, there'll be days like this, my mama said, when you open your hands to catch and wind up with blisters and bruises, when you step out of the phone booth and try to fly, and the very people you're trying to save are the ones standing on your cape. And those are the very days you have all the more reason to say thank you. Because there is nothing more beautiful than the way the ocean refuses to stop kissing the shoreline, no matter how many times it's sent away. You will put the wind in winsome, loosesome. You put the star in starting over and over. And no matter how many landmines erupt in a minute, be sure your mind lands on the beauty of this funny place called life. And yes, on a scale to one to overtrusting, I am pretty damn naive. But I want her to know that this world is made out of sugar. It can crumble so easily, but don't be afraid to stick your tongue out and taste it. Baby, I'll tell her, remember that your mama is a warrior and your papa is a warrior. And you are the girl with small hands and big eyes who never stops asking for more. Remember that good things come in threes and so do bad things. and. Always apologize when you've done something wrong, but don't you ever apologize for the way your eyes refuse to stop shining. Your voice is small, but don't you ever stop singing. And when they finally hand you heartache, when they slip war and hatred under your door and offer you handouts on street corners of cynicism and defeat, you tell them that they are to me your mother. Thank you. So I want you to take a moment, and I want you to think of three things you know to be true. They can be about whatever you want, technology, entertainment, what you had for breakfast. The only rule is don't think too hard, okay? Go. So here are three things I know to be true. I know John Lugodad was right when he said every story has a beginning, middle, and end, but not necessarily in that order. And I know I'm incredibly nervous to be up here, which is greatly inhabiting my ability to keep it cool. And I know I've been waiting all week to tell this joke. Why was the scarecrow invited to TED? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> I'm sorry. So here are three things I know to be true. But there are plenty of things I have trouble understanding. So I write poems to figure things out. Sometimes I get to the end of the poem, and I go, oh, that's what that poem was all about. And sometimes I get to the end of the poem and haven't solved anything. But at least I have a new poem out of it. Spoken word poetry is the art of performance poetry. 
I tell people it involves creating poetry that doesn't want to sit on paper. Something about it demands to be heard out loud or witnessed in person. So I realized that you have to trick teenagers into writing poetry. So I came up with a list. Everyone can write lists. And the very first list I assigned was 10 things I know to be true. And you would discover too that if we all started sharing our list out loud, someone would have the same exact thing or one thing very similar to something on your list. Then someone would have something the complete opposite of something on your list. Third, someone would have something you never even heard of before. And fourth, someone has something you thought you knew everything about, but they're introducing a new angle of looking at it. This is where great stories start from. These four intersections of what you're compassionate about and what others might be invested in. Now, most of my students get this exercise really well, except one of my students named Charlotte. She refused to write poems. Miss, she'd say, I'm just not interesting. I don't have anything interesting to say. So I assigned her list after list. One day, I assigned the list 10 things I should have learned by now. The number three on Charlotte's list was, should have learned not to crush on guys three times my age. I asked her what this meant, and she said, Miss, it's kind of a long story. And I said, Charlotte, sounds pretty interesting to me. So she wrote her first love poem, a love poem unlike I've ever heard before. And the poem began, Anderson Cooper is a gorgeous man. Did you see him on 60 Minutes racing Michael Phelps in a swimming pool, nothing but swim trunks on, diving into the water, determined to beat the swimming champion? After the race, he tossed his wet, cloud-white hair and said, you're a god. No, Anderson, you're the god. Now I know that the number one rule to seem cool is to act unfazed. To act like nothing excites you, impresses you, or scares you. Thank you.